Educator of children, that power of wisdom, Jack Benny. Thank you. Thank you. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, say something, Mr. Benny. Uh, Jimmy McClarnon sat in the corner eating a welterweight pie. He put in his thumb, pulled out the decision, and said, "What a good boy am I!" <laughs> well, did you see that fight, Jack? Did I? Why, Don, I was right there at the ringside. Did I see that fight? Well, Jack, I was at the ringside, and I looked all around, but I didn't see you. Uh, what row were you in, Don? Uh, I was in row A. Well, I was right behind you, row X. Row X. <laughs> row X. How in the world did a man in your position come to get in row X? Politics, Don. You know, there's nothing like knowing people. You know. <laughs> Yes, but row X is way back, isn't it? Oh, no, Don. It's A, B, C, D, E, X. Six rows. That isn't bad, is it? Well, I had a wonderful seat, Jack. Row A. Right next to the ring, eh, Don? No, not exactly. Uh, you see, there were ten rows of press seats. Uh -huh. Then came six rows of Republicans. I see. Six rows of Democrats. Uh -huh. And five rows of people who couldn't find their seats in the rear. Uh, and then came row A. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> You must have got your face full of rosin, eh, Don? <laughs> but then I've seen worse row A's than that. Well, I remember Boyle's 30 Acres in Jersey City where Carpentier and Dempsey fought. I remember that. Well, I had row C for that fight. What a place that was. The fight was held in Jersey City. The row A was in Elizabeth. Row B was in Trenton. And I had row C in Philadelphia. <laughs> Philadelphia? Why, that's where Dempsey and Tunney fought. That's right. I sat down in row C and waited for the Dun Dempsey Tunney fight. Huh? I killed <laughs> well, that gag myself, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> well, Jack, what did you think of the McLarnon and Ross fight? Uh, very good, Don, but nothing like back in 1903 when Terry McGovern fought young Corbett. There was a fight. Do you call that a fight? Why, well, I remember back in 1892 when Jim Corbett knocked out Sullivan. Corbett knocked out Sullivan? Yes, Jack, he certainly did. Now, you don't know what you're talking about, Corbett knocked out Sullivan. Mary? Yes, Jack? Get Sullivan on the phone. Okay. Hello, operator. Get me the daily news. I want to speak to Ed Sullivan. We'll find out. <laughs> yes, yes. He isn't in, Jack. How about Mr. Solomon? No, Mary, we're talking about fighters. Did you see the Ross and McLarnon fight the other night? Who, Jack? Ross McLarnon. Gee, the last name is familiar. Mary, listen. Look, on last Monday night, it didn't happen to rain. So two fellas by the name of Jimmy McLarnon and Barney Ross got into a ring in Long Island and fought. Did you hear anything about it at all? Oh, Jimmy and Barney. Sure, I was there, Jack. Well, what did you think of the fight? Very cute. Oh. <laughs> a cute fight, yes. And you know, Jack, Jimmy kept flirting with me all during the fight. He kept waving at me. He wasn't waving at you. He was missing Ross there, waving at you. Oh, I wondered why Ross kept bowing to me. Mary, he wasn't bowing. Look, he was ducking the punches. Well, don't tell me Jimmy wasn't flirting. In the seventh round, he winked at me. Winked at you? His left eye was closed by a punch. Oh, yeah? He can't get away with that. I'll sue him for breach of promise. Oh, sure. Mary, why did you even go to see that fight? Because that's where everybody ran when it stopped raining. Oh, well. <laughs> well, that makes sense, huh? Hello, Mary. Hiya, Jack. Oh, hello, Frank. Well, Parker, were you there? Was I? Well, I never saw anything that close in my life. First it was one, then the other. What a contest. Who do you really think won? The rainbow. You know how to sail a boat. <laughs> where ignorance is bliss, it certainly gathers no more. <laughs> yeah. Play down before it's too late. So, Jack, I saw the fight, and I thought it was swell. Save it for the next fight. We're running overtime now. Well, then, uh, play down. Yeah, that's the idea. Yeah. That was Don Bester and his row A syncopators playing You Ain't Been Living Right. And, Don, I want to say that was fine. Say that I like about you and your boys. You, you always give everything you've got. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Judge. And you know, folks, Don is one of the best dressed orchestra leaders on the air. Yep. Of course, he doesn't look so good on the street, but on the air, he's marvelous. I wouldn't talk much if I were you, Jack. 
Look at that suit you're wearing. The suit, what's the matter with it? It's a brand new outfit. You know, just a little knockabout suit. A knockabout suit? Yes, he knocked about eight dollars off the price. Yeah, you know, Don, the guy that really dresses on this program is Wilson. I mean, he always looks immaculate. Say, the Wilson, that's a dinner suit you've got on, isn't it? Yes, why? I noticed you have a little breakfast on it, too. I'd be a little careful if I were you, you know? What men on this program? Table in a carload. And now, folks, we have a big surprise for you this evening. <laughs> As you remember, the last two weeks we put on school acts. But this week we have something entirely different. Something oh, that... Oh, Jack, here's a letter for you. I think it's for you. Let's have it. This isn't for me, Mary. Well, it was addressed to Don Wilson, but Frank Parker opened it by mistake, and he said he thinks it's for you. Mary, it's, it's for you, isn't it? No, I read it by mistake, and it's for you. <laughs> well, uh, better let me read it by mistake. It, um, it's from the uh, Board of Education in Port Socket. Or Woonsocket, Rhode Island. What's the name of that town, Mary? What's the difference as long as you're healthy? Oh, sure. <laughs> it reads, um, Dear Jack Benny, or if opened by mistake, hello. <laughs> we, uh, we have a short wave radio set on which we have no trouble getting Bulgaria, Algeria, Bavaria, and Neuralgia. Last week, while trying to get malaria, we accidentally tuned in on your school day program, and it reminded us of the first three letters in the word loud and the last three letters in Jersey. <laughs> Wait a minute, I don't quite get that. Let's see, the, uh, the first three letters in the word loud and the last three in Jersey. Do you get it, Mary? Sure, a lot of people wear loud jerseys. I guess that's what they mean, yeah. I guess that's it. Uh, they also say, of course, this is only a small school, but some great scholars have come from our classes. The governor of Rhode Island came pretty near going to our school, and look where he is today. And we could mention hundreds of others. We would like to match our pupils against yours anytime. Signed, Board from Education. P.S. Bah. Oh, yeah, that last crack got me. I didn't mind that letter so much, but they can't bear me. Wilson, throw out that scenery for our play. We gotta go back to school days and show these people from Rhode Island with the help of Providence that they can't bluff us. So on with the school act. But Jack, we have no pupils tonight. Just ring the bell, they'll be here. Here come all the kiddies. Didn't I tell you, you'd be surprised how many stooges are waiting for that bell. Play, Don. <laughs> children before teacher gets nervous. Oh, good morning, Mary. How are you this morning? I've got a, a headache, teacher. What are you going to say? i got a teacher headache? Uh -huh. <laughs> That's it. i got a headache, teacher. <laughs> <laughs> That's from trying to think. You pupils will have to stop this practice. I will now call the roll. Don Bester, Jr. Here, teacher. Put out that cigar. Don Wilson, Jr. Here. Away with that racing form. Ben Bernie, Jr. Oh, yes, sir. I'm here with all the love. Jr. Am I here? Am I here? <laughs> Use your handkerchief, Jimmy. <laughs> Frank Crummett. I couldn't crumb it today. Mm. <laughs> Who wrote that, huh? <laughs> Percival E. Clare. I'm here, teacher. <laughs> that name certainly fooled me. Singing Sam, Jr. I am here, I am here. All right, all right, we know you. Bing Crosby, <laughs> Jr. Bing Crosby, Jr. The little Crosby's are too young for school. Imagine two months old. You better wait another week. Yeah? Will you stop crooning and go home? Maurice Chevalier, Jr. Oh, I'm here, teacher. I've just finished. Man, no picture of the Merry Widow. So, I have come back to school right now. Thank you. K. Francis. I'm right here with Maurice, teacher. You're telling me. All I know is what I read in the papers. Bert Wheeler, Jr. That was last week, teacher. That's right. They graduate fast here. <laughs> Fido, Jr. <laughs> Fido, why weren't you in school last week? 
<laughs> oh, well, you must take care of yourself. Yes. Well, I guess everybody's here now. Ah, there's a new pupil. I haven't seen your face before, young man. What's your name? My name is Mo. What Mo? Meeny Miney Mo. Oh, that Mo. I see. Where do you live, Mo? Kansas City. Oh, you're a Kansas City Mo, I see. Precisely. Well, sit down. I don't want to hear any Mo from you. <laughs> That was good. Now, children, we will start in with our usual morning exercises. Stand up. Throw out your chest. <laughs> now, throw back your shoulders. Now, look at you without chest or shoulders. Pick them up again. Now, children, bend down. Stretch out your arms. Ready? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Don Wilson, don't jump. I'm not jumping, teacher. The cancer baggie. Oh, pardon me. <laughs> and now, children, we will start with our music lesson. Frankie Parker Jr. will sing his song for today, The Very Thought of You. Oh, can I sing too, teacher? Yes, Don, but not as good as Parker. <laughs> children, children, quiet, quiet, children. That was Frankie Parker singing The Very Thought of You. Children, we will now start with our daily lesson. History first. Mary Livingston. Yes, teacher. Who was first in war, first in peace, and first in the hearts of his countrymen? Washington. Correct. And who was first in the American League? Detroit. But it was Washington last year. That's right. And um, who chopped down the cherry tree? The Giants. Right. They are first in the National League, yes. Frankie Parker, Jr. Yes, teacher. Frankie, who was the father of our country? I don't know, but Eddie Cantor isn't doing bad. <laughs> No, Frankie. It was Washington. Oh, he gets blamed for everything. Miney Mo, stand up. Yes, teacher. How much is 11 and 9 divided by 2? Washington. You're wrong. Well, everybody else said Washington, and it was all right. Well, maybe I'm wrong. None of us are infallible. <laughs> Fido, I'll get to you later. Don Bester, Jr. Yes, teacher. What are the three great products of the North? The three great products of the North are automobiles, steel, and... Uh, the, the new general tires with the corkscrew grip. Corkscrews, that's right. Now, Mo, Mo, you tell me, what are the three great products of the South? The possible system. Remind me to break your skull after school, huh? It's a date. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you won't have a chance to have evidence from me. Oh, What's the matter? Oh, Mr. Secretary of Labor. Oh, get in that cabinet until after school. You have a chance to be president. Yeah, I've got a chance. Yeah, they, yeah, about the same chance, yes. Huh? <laughs> now, Mo, what do you want? That's fine to the school teacher. The Senator Long of Louisiana's first... This is a red. Senator Long's first name is Huey. Oh, I'm going to have trouble with Huey, too. -y. That's a lot of hooey. <laughs> yes, Fido, you can leave the room. Yes. <laughs> We will now take up arithmetic. Don Bester, Jr., what state is the city of Newark in? New Jersey. Now we're getting someplace. Don Wilson, Jr., what state is Boise in? I don't know. That's right, Boise, Idaho. Listen. And what other large city is in Idaho? Jersey. Boise and Jersey, correct. <laughs> Mary Livingston? Yes, teacher. Name the largest city in the state of Washington. The largest city in Washington is, uh, uh... Now, come, uh, come. Now, maybe I can help you. Uh, what do you do with your eyes? And what keeps the doctor away? An apple. Then what is the largest city in Washington? Seattle. Seattle, Washington. That's right. <laughs> Very good. Huh? And now tell me, what state is Portland in? Uh, Portland is in, uh, er, uh, er, Oregon. Er. That's it, Oregon. That's right. Portland, Oregon. Huh? Percival E. Clare. Yes, teacher. Never mind, never mind. Uh, Mary Livingston. Yes, sir. Stand up and tell the class what happened in 1776. What street? I mean, what happened in the year 1776? Oh, that's way before my time. Why don't you ask Frankie Parker? All right, sit down. Frankie Parker, what happened in the year 1776? What? 17. Where, where did the Boston Tea Party take place? I don't know. I drink coffee. <laughs> Does anybody in this classroom drink tea? I drink beer, teacher. All right, then. Where did the Boston Beer Party take place? 255 Tremont Street. You get free lunch with it. Uh, right. Mark down that number. We will now take up our spelling. Mary Livingston, spell chrysanthemum. Spell it? I've got a cold and can't even smell it. Then smell rose. Oh. Now, Don Bester Jr., tell me, 
Who was the vulgar boatman? Oh, I don't know. None of them are perfect. Neither are you. Frankie Parker, Jr. Frankie Parker, Jr.? Likewise. Likewise. Uh, what is an optimist? An optimist is a man who makes eyeglasses. Eyeglasses, an optimist. And what is an optician? When a man puts a deposit on something, he takes an optician on it. That's an option. <laughs> well, yes, if you want to use slang. Oh. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, teacher, teacher. What is it, Mo? I know what an optimist is. What? The British sailboat Endeavour. Well, why is the Endeavour an optimist? Because it's always chasing rainbow. <laughs> I get it, I get it. Chasing rainbow. And what is a rainbow, Mary? A uh, rainbow is a cloud with too much lip loose. That's good, that's good. Huh? I thought you'd like it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Morton Downey, Jr. Morton, you haven't been paying attention to, this, to our program. What's on your mind? <laughs> now, look what you did. You woke up Fido. I'll have to ask him questions. Fido, how much are two and two? Four. Thank heaven we have one intelligent pupil in this class. Huh? I knew the answer, but I can't bark. Oh. <laughs> Now, Fido, who do you think won the big fight last Monday night? I don't know, but it cost me ten bucks. Huh? Now, Fido, one more question. When you go out hunting, what animals do you catch? Rabbit. That's it, rabbit. And what's the synonym for rabbit? Come, come now. Come, what's another word for rabbit? It's hair. What? Oh, you two, hair, hair. What's on your head? Please, he's only a dog. <laughs> Hey, Jack, that's my joke. I know, but it's his please. Get out of here, Fido. Get out. Go on. Out. Now, pew, pupils, it's getting late, so I want to give you your homework for tomorrow. I want every one of them. There goes the bell. It's too late. School is over. Children, you can all go home. Goodbye, 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 Goodbye. Hi, children. Good night, Goodbye, Johnny Wood. Thanks again for doing those imitations. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, Mary, Mary, come back here a minute. What is it, teacher? It's a writing pad and pencil. I want you to put a little ad in the newspaper. All right, what'll I say? For sale, first-class schoolhouse, suitable for garage, Chinese laundry, or high-class tablet. Money, no object. Must unload, as we are doing a play next week. Address J.B. Box 52, General Tire and Rubber Company, Akron, Ohio. Anything else? No. Good night, Mary. So long, Toots. That reminds me. How much is Toots and Toots? Four. That's right. Play Toots. Or Don. I don't know. This message is directed to the young businessmen of America, not only as a business opportunity, but without egotism, it can be spoken of as a mission that has a considerable bearing upon the safety and well-being of a vast percentage of the people, the motoring public. Among the car owners of America, there are probably few who have not realized from the frequently published figures the staggering loss of life and limb that is caused annually by skidding accidents. The skidding bill of America is bigger than the tire bill. That fact has stood constantly as a challenge to the tire industry. It has been intensified every year with a step up in power and speed of automobiles. And every year, with pardonable pride, General Tire has managed to meet the challenge in many cases a year or two in advance of letter, including references direct to the General Tire and Rubber Company, Akron, Ohio. Inquiries should not be made in person or by telegraph. Once again, the address, the General Tire and Rubber Company, Akron, Ohio. This is the National Broadcasting Company.
quarter of a minute past 11 o'clock Eastern Daylight Saving Time. WEAF, New York.